Growing basil indoors is easy. In fact, if there was ever a plant that was tailor-made for indoor cultivation, it's gotta be basil, aka the kingly herb. Key points are, don't let it flower and harvest the young leaves for the best taste. The popular sweet Genovese variety comes from India and the Middle East. Oh, and a few islands in the Pacific, too. Now, basil absolutely loves plenty of light, warmth, and shelter. Easy conditions to recreate indoors. I mean, just look at those tender, delicate leaves. Hardy? She is not. For the sake of diversity, I'm starting six varieties in Grodan AOK Rockwool starter plugs. I've pre-soaked these in pH 5.5 water, that's all, a few seeds in each hole, and after starting these initial plants, I'll keep the basil going indefinitely using cuttings. But first, the seeds. Tuck them in so they're surrounded by moisture. Here they are after just four days in the propagator under a T5 fluorescent light 24 hours a day. Temperatures are in the low to mid 80s. I don't bother dipping the cubes, just spray them really well every few days. Once I see two or four true leaves, then I start hardening them up by leaving the propagator vents open. As you can see, I've removed any extra shoots to leave the best seedling in each cube. After after about 7 to 10 days, once I see quite a few roots popping out on the blocks like this, they're ready to transplant into a hydroponic growing system. Okay, so let's quickly talk about that. I'm going to use an Airflow 18 by General Hydroponics. Super easy to set up and maintain, and this is the baby of the Airflow range. As the name suggests, it has 18 plant sites spread over 3 4 foot NFT gully style growing chambers. A submersible pump sits inside a 17 gallon reservoir and drives super oxygenated nutrient solution directly to the roots. The roots get sprayed as well as benefiting from the flow of the nutrient solution back into the reservoir. In each side is a net basket with a Coco Tech liner. These help to contain the growing media. I'm going to use hydrogen clay balls. Make sure you wash them before use to remove any dust and particulates. Just to keep things interesting, I've decided to supercharge growth rates with this Sun Systems 315 watt LEC fixture. Bear in mind that it would normally cover an area of 2.5 feet by 2.5 feet. However, I'm almost doubling its coverage with a light rail. It automatically moves my grow light back and forth, meaning my plants receive intense, even light with no hot spots. An awesome piece of kit that stood the test of time in many indoor gardens. Okay, let's switch the Aeroflow 18 on and take a look inside. Whoa, just look at all that super oxygenated nutrient solution being pumped through the channels and then returning back to the reservoir. Like I said, this is a turbocharged hydroponic system and it makes a fair bit of noise. You hear that? Okay, okay, I'll mute that down. Transplant your seedlings into the net pot, surrounding them with the washed, expanded clay balls. When my plants are small like this and the roots are not well developed, I make sure the drain tubes are at their maximum height to allow nutrient solution to reach the bottom of the net pots. Once the roots have grown and are immersed within the flowing stream of nutrient, you can push these down to increase oxygen levels within the nutrient solution and growing chamber. Some growers top feed their plants with the dripper system at first just to help them get established. I keep my pH at around 6 and my nutrients to 500 ppm, or 1.0 millisiemens. Top up with water every few days and change the reservoir out completely every 10 days or so. I use reverse osmosis water, Calimagic to 100 ppm, and then flora duo base nutrients equal parts of A and B to bring me up to 500 ppm. When my plants are more mature, they can take up to 800 ppm or 1.6 millisiemens. Here we are a few weeks later. You'll notice that I've ripped out the lemon and lime basil as these pernickety varieties, I really want to call them something else, didn't like being constantly dripped and went straight to flower. They are really sensitive to dampening off too. However, However, by the magic of video editing, ta-da, I've cunningly replaced them with some cuttings, courtesy of my Easy Clone Aeroponic Cloning Machine. You can just cut off the tops and put them straight into the machine. No need for cloning gel. Basil roots easily. It's a great way of filling any gaps, and my neighbors love me when I give them any spares. Now, the Thai basil prefers slightly more humid conditions than I'm giving it. It's just 40 to 50% relative humidity in my grow room right now, but it's still coping well, and I've kept my nutrient concentrations on the low side to help it through. The Greek basil is super compact, tastes great, ding, and much heartier than the Thai or sweet Genovese. If you like basil and pasta sauce, try the lettuce leaf variety as it works really well. If you see flowers forming, pick them off to keep it producing leaves. Remember, always harvest from the top and try to encourage the plants to bush out. You can freeze whatever you can't use, make pesto, or just put extra cutoffs into your cloning machine. Bear in mind that basil roots are really, really tender, so you'll need to take extra care when you're transferring your rooted basil cuttings into the net pots. Right, I'll finish up there. As you can see, the growth rates are pretty incredible from the Aeroflow. If you have any questions or basil grow tips you'd like to share, please do so below. I always love to hear from you. See you soon.